The Peak Design Everyday Backpack version 2 is a bag that I did a review of about six months ago, which you can find up here. And at the time, I had only owned it for a couple of weeks, and although it was enough time to know what I liked and disliked about the bag, it wasn't enough time to really live with it, travel with it, use it professionally, and things of that nature. So today, we're going to be reviewing the Peak Design Everyday Backpack version 2 six months later. So you guys ready? Let's get to it. <laughs> So the Peak Design Everyday Backpack version 2 20 liter in black on black is probably one of the best looking backpacks I've ever seen in my life. That's the thing that originally drew me to this bag is it's just super clean looking and it has a really nice minimalist aesthetic to it. One of the things I really dislike about a lot of modern camera bags is they look like camera bags. And the last thing I want to do is let everybody know, hey, I have a bunch of expensive gear on my back. I'd much rather have a backpack that's more low key and the Peak Design Everyday Backpack is about as low-key as it gets. While we're talking about the aesthetics of this bag, the other thing I really like about it is it doesn't have that hiker van life aesthetic to it. It seems like all too often nowadays, camera bags look like they should have deer antlers and snowshoes and pots and pans hanging off of them, and I'm just not really into that look. So the Peak Design Everyday Backpack is made from 100% recycled materials, and I couldn't believe that when I heard it. You wouldn't be able to tell just looking at this bag or holding it. It feels like a high-end pre premium bag that's going to withstand the test of time and really protect your gear. It's not 100% perfect though. The inside of this bag is showing signs of wear. The origami dividers are fraying at the edges and they don't hold their shape like they used to. And the inside pockets, while they're still elastic, are showing like some felting marks on them or like wear marks. I don't really know what's causing it. I guess it's just where the lens rubs up against the pockets, but it is showing signs of wear, which isn't all that strange for a bag that's been used heavily for six months. No matter what you make it out of, it's probably still going to show wear marks. So on the outside of the everyday backpack, there's two weatherproof zippers that run the whole length of the bag, and these give you access to the main compartment. And they have like pull tabs on them, which can be looped and fastened at the top of the bag, so the pockets can't be opened without your knowledge, like if you're standing on the subway and somebody tries to pickpocket you. And this is a feature that I use all the time, even though I thought I wouldn't really use it at all. The other standout feature on the outside of this bag is, of course, the mag latch. I love the mag latch design so much. I think it's ingenious to have expandable storage on top of your bag and not have to deal with one of those roll up things that you would see on some camera bags. It still looks like a normal backpack, but you have the expandable storage. How it works is there's basically a ladder underneath the flap and it will latch at any of those rungs. So as the top of the bag fills up, you can still latch and protect your gear. To be honest, at first I thought the expandable storage was kind of a gimmick, like why would I ever fill my bag up all that much, but I use it constantly. Like I put the DJI Mini 2 in there because the bag fits perfectly. Sometimes I'll put clothing in there if I'm traveling. You could fit like a Stromboli in there. There's also two elastic accessory pockets on either side of this bag, which you can use for water bottles or tripods. They even have their own accessory straps built into them so you can tie down whatever you put in them, but I wouldn't use them for a larger tripod because anytime I've tried to do that, it's just felt wobbly and off balance and kind of uncomfortable. On the outside of the everyday backpack, there's three handles. There's one on either side and there's one on top and they're made of a nylon material, which is like noticeably cheaper than the rest of the bag. Mine are already stretched out. And as I said, I've only had this bag for six months. The other thing that's really strange is the black on black colorway doesn't have leather on the handles, unlike the other colors, which does. Maybe that would have saved it from stretching out. The lack of leather on the handles is just a really strange design choice by Peak Design. You might say that it's not Peak Design. <laughs> And this brings us to the main straps on this bag, the backpack straps, if you will. The straps you're gonna be using 99% of the time, and they're really comfortable on this bag. And I mean really comfortable. Like, you can carry a lot of gear in this thing for a long time before your shoulders start to get tired. Especially if you're using the sternum strap, which I personally thought, why would I use that? Now that I'm used to using it every time I put this bag on, it's noticeable that I can carry more gear for longer without getting tired. So the straps on this bag are just sewn in at the bottom, but at the top, they're fastened with this large 
large rivet that allows them to pivot side to side depending on how wide you are. It makes the bag feel a lot more tailor made than most backpacks do. The straps also magnetize to the back of the bag when they're not in use and it keeps it nice and tidy looking. But the thing that kind of irks me about it is if the straps are magnetized to the back of the bag and the bag tips over or you lay it down on your bed, the straps will get all like bunched up and creased underneath it for whatever reason. It's not a huge design flaw, but it's just something that kind of irks me. Last but not least on the outside of the everyday backpack are the accessory straps. Peak Design went with like a modular design here where there's loops all over the bag where you can fasten the straps in pretty much whatever orientation you want. And I thought this design would grow on me over time, but it never really did. I still don't like them all that much. One of the main reasons I don't like the straps are because they're removable. I'd much rather have them sewn in and permanent. Not every design needs to be modular is pretty much what I'm thinking here. I don't really like the idea of the strap either A, becoming loose and falling off while something valuable is strapped to the bag, or B, just losing one of the straps and having to replace it. In all fairness, most of the reviews I've seen on the Everyday Backpack say that they absolutely love the accessory straps, so maybe I'm not in the right demographic, but I just don't like the idea of an expensive gimbal or tripod hanging from a strap that's not sewn in. And that concludes the outside of this bag. Let's take a look at the inside. <sighs> So the first thing you'll notice on the inside of this bag are the two pockets on either side. The top one is magnetic and the bottom one is zipper. These are great for small accessories like lens filters, lens cloths, and batteries. This brings us to the star of the show on the inside of this bag, the origami dividers. The Peak Design Everyday Backpack comes with three origami dividers and much like the name implies, they change shape to be whatever type of storage that you want on the inside of your bag. They fasten to the inside of this bag much like a camera cube divider would through Velcro and there's literally hundreds of different ways that you can set these things up. You can even buy new ones if you lose one on Peak Design's website. The way I set up the origami dividers is pretty standard. It's pretty much the exact same way that it came with the bag, but I made a little bit of space at the very bottom for camera filters. My main gripe with the origami dividers is they don't hold your gear in place like a camera cube would. When you put your lens inside this bag, it's basically just sitting on a padded shelf. And yes, it's protected, but you're also gonna feel it wobbling around as you're walking around, and I really don't like that. Another pet peeve I have with the origami dividers is depending on how they're set up, they may split the bag side to side and because it's side access, there will be times when you open up the wrong side of the bag. So now you have to close it again, switch arms, open it again and get at whatever you're getting at and it's just super annoying and tedious. And yeah, I know there's much worse problems to have in this life than I open the wrong side of my $300 backpack, but still it's annoying. If you spend that much money on a backpack, you want to love it and I personally don't love side access for that very reason. And I'd much rather be able to see all my gear at once and get at whatever I'm trying to get at. This just leaves the laptop compartment and the laptop compartment isn't really used all that much in my case. I don't have a laptop that I bring with me everywhere so I just never have a chance to use it. I just throw some business cards and a holder in there but it will hold a full 16 inch MacBook Pro. So if you have a laptop, rest assured it will fit in this bag. And that brings me to the reason that I set out making this video in the first place. How do I feel about the Peak Design Everyday Backpack version two after owning it for six months? And the answer is I like it a little bit more now, but I still don't think that it's a camera bag. I think that it's a good commuter's bag or a good travel bag, a student's bag, but it's not a good camera bag in my opinion. And I'm gonna tell you the reason why. When I first saw this bag, I thought to myself, okay, cool. With the side access, I can flip it around and switch lenses and put it back and get right back to work. It'll be kind of like a crossover between a backpack and a sling bag. And this isn't the case whatsoever. Anytime I do anything other than just pull a battery out of the bag, I have to put it all the way down on the ground anyway. So just give me full access in the first place, which is exactly what I'm going to after this bag, a full access bag. The other thing that kind of bugs me about side access reminds me of Murphy's Law, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Whenever I open just one side of the bag up, whatever item I'm looking for is usually on the other side for some reason and I don't know how it always happens but it does. Speaking of full access camera bags, the bag that I'm planning on switching to from the Peak Design bag is the Peter McKinnon Nomadic Everyday Camera Line, the one that's on Kickstarter. I already ordered it and they should be here in January, so stay tuned for the review of that soon. So in closing with the Peak Design Everyday Backpack version two, I think the thing that annoyed me the most is on Peak Design's website, there's a bunch of different camera loadouts where there's like 
three lenses and two camera bodies, and they seem to market it towards the camera community, and I just don't really agree with that. It's much more suited towards laptops, books, clothing, headphones, things of that nature, like a student's bag or a commuter's bag, like I said. And you know what? You may be completely different than I am. You may fill the everyday backpack to the brim with camera gear and absolutely love the form factor and the functionality and using it in professional settings. It's just not for me as far as that's concerned, but I commend Peak Design for making something different and innovative and weird. I'd much rather see that than the thousands of cookie cutter Amazon camera backpacks out there that are all built like crap. At least Peak Design is out here pushing the envelope and trying different things and making products that are built like tanks. And that's all I really have to say on this one. If you got something out of this video, consider going down and hitting the like button or the sub button. It means the world to content creators like me. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Sam Has a Spending Problem, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.